Mark Pack is a Lib Dem blogger, editor of Liberal Democrat Newswire and author of 101 Ways to Win an Election. Mark, thank you for your time this morning. So this pledge then to cancel Brexit without a second referendum, your book is called 101 Ways to Win an Election. Do you think this is one of those ways? Well, the pledge is to revoke Article 50 if we win a general election. And that absolutely is a basic part of democracy. At an election, you set out what your policies are going to be. And if you win, you then do your best to implement them. Do you think it will contribute to the Lib Dems winning a general election? I think even the most optimistic Liberal Democrat knows it's a little bit of a long shot that we would get an overall majority at the next election. But who knows? British politics has thrown up all sorts of remarkable twists and turns in the story in the last few years. And certainly I think one thing this policy does do is it sets out very clearly that if you vote Lib Dem, you're voting for a party that doesn't want Britain to leave the European Union. And that's very different from not only the Conservative position, but also Labour's sort of leave, sort of remain, not quite sure, might be something, might not position. But if you make the election about even, you know, fundamentally rather than entirely about this particular issue, then, and go with me on this, you run the risk of the Mm. following scenario. The Lib Dems win a majority on 40% of the vote. Mm. Therefore, a majority of people have voted against the Mm. immediate revocation of Article 50. Straight away, you have the charge levelled at you that you are undemocratically changing the result of a democratic referendum. Well, there were a lot of problems with how that referendum was conducted, not only the number of times Leave campaigners have been caught breaking the law, but also the way, let's not forget, during that campaign, leading Leave campaigners and their official literature promised a deal would be negotiated all in good time. And now the Leave campaigners have changed what they want. Loads of them who are happily saying before, no, we'll definitely have a deal, don't worry, there won't be any cliff edge, are now saying, yeah, let's jump off the cliff edge. So if Leave campaigners are changing what they're saying they want, it's absolutely reasonable to say, look, let's In a general election, if people vote Liberal Democrat, we'll revoke Article 50. Of course, I'm sure these campaigners will carry on campaigning for what they believe, and who knows, at some future election they may win and they may get to do what they want. But there is a certain irony for these campaigners who talk about it's really important to give the British Parliament more power and British Parliament sovereignty. They then turn around and say, well, actually, you know what? We don't really want the British Parliament to be able to decide these things. Oh, listen, I I understand those arguments, Mm. but again, and I say this as a Ramoni snowflake before someone else (laughs) accuses me of being that, um, I want to see us stay in the European Union. I make no Mm. secret about that. I always have. I just wonder if the Lib Dems, as I say, are opening themselves up to the charge of perhaps finding, shall we say, a lower threshold or a way to getting to a lower threshold to be needed to overturn that result? Because you could take power on 40% with a majority, plenty of governments have, and Mm. then overturn something which was voted for by a majority of people. Mm. Well, let's not forget, this is how our democracy works. We have a parliamentary democracy, and it's an absolutely normal part of that, that when a government wins an election on whatever share of the vote, if it wins a majority in parliament, it gets to implement its policies. Now, definitely... Parties should be held to account if they promise something in election. If they don't, then deliver on it. And my goodness, the Liberal Democrats know the problems with not managing mm. to deliver on what we said at election time. But this would be a very normal part, working part of our democracy, the sort of right. thing the governments of all parties have done previously. Except one of those manifesto commitments in 2015 made by the Conservatives, which was then followed by an election in which for the first time in about 25 years, I think, mm. the Conservatives actually won a majority, mm. was to have a referendum on the European mm. Union. It was to have precisely the referendum that your critics will contend you now wish to overturn. Well, it's a, one of the things in a democracy. In fact, David Davis himself, they said it, the former Conservative Brexit Secretary himself said, you know, in a democracy, people get a right to change their mind. Otherwise, it isn't a democracy. So if people decide they want to go ahead with Brexit, absolutely, don't vote Liberal Democrat. He would rather people decide they don't want to go ahead with Brexit and do vote Liberal Democrat. But if you don't, but if you want Brexit, don't vote Lib Dem. It's a very clear, simple democratic choice, I think. Which minds will this change? Well, I think there are probably two groups of people. One is people who are looking for, you know, they want Britain to remain in, in the European Union and they're looking for a party that is clearly committed to that. So I think that will be helpful with that group. But there are also a group of people who just want this whole thing to be over and done with and to be able to get on with having a government that concentrates on improving public services and protecting our environment and tackling social inequality and moving to a very clear, you vote Liberal Democrat, 
Article 50 gets revoked, we'll be able to then crack on with all these other issues and deal with them. I think it's going to be quite attractive to many people. You're quite certain that you would be able, in the Commons, with the majority, to revoke Article 50. You don't think that you would find some of your new members of Parliament in this majority moving away from that manifesto position? Because if we've seen one thing over the last couple of years, it is that party labels and mm. manifesto commitments made nominally by candidates in, in 2017 have not always transferred into the way they voted in the Commons two years later. No, absolutely. And I think, I mean, obviously, Liberal Democrats, we got our fingers very badly burnt in 2010 to 15, in part because people felt we had said things at the 2010 election that, that we, they, we then didn't really manage to deliver on. I think we achieved lots of many good things, but clearly there were some, some big issues there. So I think <laughs> you know, because we really got our fingers badly burned by the electorate in 2015, it's a lesson the party has very much learned. And actually, you know, in the past, there have been one or two, as it were, more Eurosceptic uh, Liberal Democrat MPs or parliamentary candidates. And mm. you have seen that shift in the party, that it is a much even more pro-European party in that sense than it was before. So I think we can be confident that the Liberal Democrat MPs who are elected on a very clear manifesto of saying, let's revoke Article 50, that's what they'll end they'll then vote for, because we'll right. see what happens if we don't keep our word. And so you think that every Lib Dem candidate in the election, whenever it comes, will be absolutely signed up to this principle? As there are going to be several hundred of them, I wouldn't put it beyond the bounds of possibility <laughs> you'll be able to hunt out one somewhere. Uh, but I think absolutely, overwhelmingly, they will be very clearly signed up to it. And, you know, if there is a Liberal Democrat majority in Parliament, that it will then deliver on it. No, there's not going to be a Liberal Democrat majority, is there? So this is really about signalling to the voters that the Lib Dems are now the most remaining of all the parties. In much the same way, you could make a case here that what the Lib Dems are doing is the mirror image of what the Brexit party are doing. They are uh, seeking to offer as much clarity as possible. But what you are doing is effectively offering something that you know you won't have to offer. What happens when you don't win the majority? Do you then start supporting the second referendum again? Oh, that's obviously a possibility. I mean, I think if we have, let's say, a hung parliament and there's a big, you know, watch of Liberal Democrat MPs, but not enough to vote to revoke Article 50, then what we've always been very clear about is we want to try and find a way to keep Britain in the European Union. And if the only way we can get a majority for something in parliament is for a people's vote referendum, then, yeah, that's what we would support. And it's interesting you made the reference to the Brexit Party, because let's not forget the European elections. Like just a few months ago, you know, Liberal Democrats and the Brexit Party finished first and second. And you know, neither Labour nor Tory finished in the top two. I mean, that is quite remarkable for a national election. So who knows what's going to happen at this general election? I mean, you're right. The historical form book would suggest Liberal Democrats are not going to sweep to, to 10 Downing Street straight away. But, I mean, look look at just how remarkable that European election was. I wouldn't I wouldn't completely rule it out. If you could get, you know, good odds of the bucket makers, it might be worth a five. Well, quite. I mean, of course, I'll just point out that UKIP, of course, in 2014, won the European elections and didn't return a single member mm. five years later. So you're right, things can change and change quickly, mm. but not necessarily... <laughs> Hopefully not that way. Not necessarily in, in, in parties' favour. But going into that election, you have cut off the possibility of a Remain alliance, because I can't see how the Lib Dems and the Labour Party get together and have arrangements going into the election in any seat, given that your official positions are now much further apart than they were? Well, I, I mean, there, there was already a really big issue with Labour's official position, because Labour's official position is its first priority is to go and negotiate a new Brexit deal, and that's a very, very different position from the Lib Dems. That said, I mean, I know there are many very good and committed Remainers in the Labour Party ranks, and indeed amongst Labour Party voters. And I'm sure we'll see quite a lot of Labour Party voters voting with their, I was going to say with their feet, but probably with their pencils on the, on the ballot yeah. paper and tactically voting in many places for the Remain candidate who they think has got the best Well, that would be, that would be a choice that voters make. But what I'm saying is at a party mm. level, even if the Labour Party today unequivocally committed without any reservations to a second referendum and supporting Remain in that referendum, that wouldn't now be good enough for the Lib Dems because your position is is, is further even than that. It's immediate revocation of Article 50. I mean, Labour have had years to get off the fence on Europe and become a unequivocally Remain party and have decided you know, very deliberately, very repeatedly to stay on the fence, to be a bit remain -y, a bit leave -y. So I think the idea, you know, the question about what happens if Labour were to completely change its policy overnight, interesting hypothetical question, but maybe 
maybe even lower, less likely that that will happen than the Lib Dem majority government. Well, it might be a question that Lib Dems need to answer. If that does mm. happen, do you then row back from this position of immediate revocation of Article 50? Do you go back into the... Do you start rowing again behind the idea of a second referendum? No, I mean, I think there is a lot to said for going straight to revoking Article 50 so that the next government can get on with all of these other important things. And also there is a practical issue, which is that if we do have a referendum, and it might be that ends up being the least worst yeah, option that's available, depending on what the election result is, but that will consume probably, what, nine months of the first nine months of the next government. That will be nine months not spent on fixing all the other things that need fixing in the country. So I think there is a lot of merit of let's just settle this, settle it quickly. But, you know, if the public in their wisdom vote for, vote for a parliament where a second referendum is the only route forward, then, of course, it would be churlish to us to say, oh, no, no, that's not a pure enough solution for us. All right, Mark, thank you, Mark Pack, Lib Dem blogger, editor of Liberal Democrat Newswire, author of 101 Ways to Win an Election. Joining me this morning, Liberal Democrats pledging to immediately cancel Brexit if they win a majority at the next general election. Their contention is that gives them a mandate to do so without having to get a specific mandate in a second referendum.